Welcome back. Now, many developing countries are faced with high debts in this high inflation environment and not enough funding for capital expenditures. And so governments are seeking new ways to finance infrastructure projects. Kenya, for one, is considering debt for nature or climate swaps to unlock funds for building water dams amid a cash crunch that has risk of derailing spending on key development projects. Joining me to discuss this and to you know, unpack it is Komi Ajegbo, Vice President Investment, Africa Finance Corporation. Good afternoon, Komi. It's good to have you back on the program. Good afternoon. It's good to be back. Thank you. <laughs> now, we've seen that Kenya has decided, like many other developing countries, to adopt the debt for climate swap to meet mm -hmm. some of its infrastructure projects. But we just want to know, maybe enlighten us, how does this work? Fantastic. So I think it's a really pertinent question, given what's happening in the world today. So I'm first going to talk about what debt swaps are, you know, why we're seeing them, and then go into why Kenya may be looking at this. So I think the first step is, you know, a debt swap is really about providing an opportunity for raising capital for low-income countries to address environmental and other policy challenges. Um, it's not particularly novel or new. It's been in use since the 80s, I believe, according to the World Bank. It just hasn't been used on a wide scale because they can be quite complex. They can take a lot of time. And yeah, it just takes a lot to be able to get through all of the negotiations and ensure that it's being applied properly. So really, a debt swap is buying debt that currently exists for a country at a cheaper rate and the country utilizing the difference in the rate to apply to environmental projects. Um, a very specific example could be a country that has $100 million in debt in the secondary market or through a sec another lender, you know, they buy that debt at say $10 million and it is off of the back of negotiation with that specific country that the difference of the face value of the original debt in this instance, $90 million, would be utilized to fund local projects that impact climate. Now, practically, how is that, you know, how does that work? You would typically see the equivalent of the $90 million being distributed in local currency either through local currency bonds or through other various instruments, NGOs or government entities implement these projects. So you can see it's it's sort of the correlation here is about reducing the debt exposure on the one hand for the country and also simultaneously having positive impact on the climate and the environment for the country. Typical beneficiaries you'll see are obviously the countries and the, the population at large. Talk about um, the, okay. if we think of, You've spoken about the benefits, sorry. some of the benefits, but are there risks to this type of funding? Absolutely. Like any financial instrument, there are always risks. Um, one of the risks could be their ability to actually execute the projects. Um, the ability, the, another risk could be the monitoring of the implementation of these projects. You know, we're talking about vast sums of money that will be utilized to develop environmental projects. And one has to ensure that the projects are actually really well detailed and understood and also very well monitored. So you can ensure that the benefit is actually being passed on. So what measures can maybe the, the debt or the creditor you know, were put in place to ensure that the debt a country executes the intended project when it's supposed to and, you know, carry it through? As in, is there anything that ensures that the government does follow through with the project it's collected the money for? Absolutely. And you can look at this from both sides of the table, right? The countries that are borrowing the money and the creditors that are providing the money. From the country perspective, they could equip themselves, you know, with the right know-how, the right, the right consultants and the right support to ensure that what they are presenting as projects are very detailed and they put forward a monitoring plan. On the creditor side, again, it's taking time and spending the time to actually go through the detail and make sure you understand what these projects are, how they will be implemented, and how long it will take. Because when you talk about implementation, you're not going to see results in a matter of days, months, or weeks. It's going to take years, right? So there's going to have to be a sustained effort to monitor and to measure the impact of these projects. 
So in the case of Kenya now, you know, looking for this kind of swap to fund their water dam project, do you think the country is ready for this? And do you think they will see it through? What, what's your opinion? What's your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? To be honest, I think if there's any country that could find a way to successfully make this work, it would likely be Kenya. Um, we understand why they are seeking this money, just given the backdrop. They had a recent downgrade. Their reserves are, are reducing. They are having high inflation. The shilling has depreciated. So I think this is them taking prudent steps and measures to figure out innovative ways to finance projects that still need to happen. Um, like you mentioned, the water project Kenya is trying to fund, they estimate they will need about $14 billion to be able to implement the projects that they have to meet their 2030 NDCs. That is not a small figure. And so Kenya, as well as many other countries, probably should start now thinking about innovating financing solutions. Thank you so much, uh, Komi Ajebo, Vice President, Investment, Africa Finance Corporation, for sharing those insightful perspectives with us.